デスノートザラストネイwelcome back to another edition i'm mike so today i am joined by the awesome anthony a perez who has agreed to come back and review the second part of our death note live action movie series from 2006 and this one is death note 2 the last name this film picks up exactly where the first one left off with that kind of confrontation with light and l in that library museum scene but we also get an introduction into misa amane her reaching up with the second death note book and we get the introduction of the god of death rem we are going to hear from anthony's force in just a very quick second I love this movie. I actually really enjoyed it and with myself anyway compared to what Anthony was saying last time in his reviews. So I've watched this anime very recently so this is very fresh in my mind. So taking that into account and then going into that into these two movies that just split apart in about two hours twenties each. So at least they did try to give appropriate runtimes for this to actually play out because they don't include the part of say episode 27 28 in the original anime which i'm not going to mention for spoiler reasons but if you have you'll know exactly what i'm talking about i just appreciate the fact that they did stretch us over a good narrative they gave it a lot of time to give a bit more storytelling a lot of kind of character building as well i appreciate the fact that these two parts that we've got do try to stick and stay faithful to the original anime and i really felt that throughout the both movies yes there's parts that they changed up but they had to because they don't include the part after say episode 27 28 in the original anime so they actually had to change the narrative to fit in the overall story and how they were going to explain the ending especially which is a massive crucial part in the anime so i appreciate firstly the fact that they actually went that route i'd also say as well that i like that the performances in this i didn't think the performances were terrible for most part they actually did a pretty good job and at least they tried to follow the anime mannerisms of those characters yes they could have done their own interpretation absolutely agree with that however i do appreciate that if you want an anime movie that is faithful to the original source i feel like this 2006 movies is probably the closest you're going to get because for most part it is exactly faithful to the anime. There's a lot of stuff in these two movies that literally happens in the Death Note anime. Yes, again, there is differences and the differences to the end. And I'm going to discuss that in my kind of second part of the thoughts. Overall, I was entertained by this movie. I didn't feel like it stretches to our 20 minute runtime. I was intrigued as to how they're actually going to end this, especially how they don't include the part after episode 27, 28 in the original anime definitely gave us an ending that i personally believe should have happened kind of in the anime or at least one of two of them anyway so before i kind of carry on and give more of my thoughts because i've got a lot more to say let's hand over to anthony and see what he thinks about death note 2 the last name What's going on, Mike, and all his viewers? A big thanks, my friend, once again for having me here in another video. This time to continue our saga of the Death Note live action uh, reviews. And yeah, we're talking about Death Note 2, The Last Name. And I was looking forward to checking this one out because, again, just like I said when we did the first one, I had never seen these movies before, like this version of the live action story of Death Note. Huge fan of the anime. Not so much of the first film. There's things that work about it for sure, and I love the premise. Uh, but as a film, I think sometimes it's struggled with being able to bring something to live action adapting it to live action uh, while also kind of having one toe and trying to make it like a more serious grounded live action approach and then having another toe in kind of a more cartoony over the top live action anime kind of feel and i feel like that's just something that people struggle with when it comes to creating one of these live action anime adaptations you know do you go more anime than you do live action and kind of grounding it or do you you know go the other way around and i think that this movie kind of of, I think this movie kind of just is inconsistent at times and I feel the same way about this movie in a lot of ways that I do the first one I think the benefit that this movie has is the fact that you know the setup for the story and kind of the main kind of you know push of the narrative has already really happened so at this point in the movie there's a lot of new stuff that's happening but we kind of already deeper into the story so you get to kind of just jump straight into the action 
This movie overall, though, I found to be entertaining and, you know, I was definitely still engaged in what was happening, but a little bit more boring than the first one. There was just a lot of people sitting around and talking in this one a lot more than it felt like in the first one, and there isn't enough of the Death God moments, even though they are, you know, in the movie. Uh, characters like Ryuk are very underutilized in this film. Rem is a pretty bigger part of this film, and I enjoy the character of Rem, and I enjoy the CG a little bit more in this film than in the first one. I feel like it's just a tad bit better, uh, but overall, I found the film to just be okay it was cool i wasn't crazy about it didn't love it didn't hate it kind of similar to the first movie again you have performances that are just so over the top at times that it becomes like a, it's so bad it's good kind of moment especially when it comes to the death the people who are having the heart attack because of the death note those performances are just so overblown that that part of it just feels so cartoony uh when a lot of the other performances at times do feel pretty grounded but it is a mix because there are performances given that are just normal moments of dialogue that do feel like a more anime kind of inspired moment whereas there are other moments in certain performances that it feels a little bit more grounded again it kind of has this inconsistency as far as the performances i feel like the direction wasn't really solid when it comes to you know how you want to kind of emulate this world of the anime while also giving it its own feel and vibe it just kind of felt inconsistent there was moments where it felt over the top and then moments where it felt more grounded and i felt the same way when i watched the first one but again i did enjoy some of the effects a little bit more this time around and i could say i was a little bit more energetic entertained with this one at times but overall i think that both movies just kind of struggle from um, really exciting storytelling and a three arc structure this movie because of the fact that it's two movies spread out uh, i just don't think that it has its own narrative to really care about there are characters introduced kind of just thrown into the story who are discarded not long after and you just never really care about anybody that shows up in this movie and as somebody who's a fan of the anime you know i appreciate the fact that this movie took some creative liberties uh but yeah while i'm watching it i can't help but feel like these characters that they're introducing that i already may have some attachment to because of the anime yeah this iteration of them just is not flying for me uh the biggest negative i can give this movie personally and it was one of the bigger negatives that i had about the first film was the actor who plays the character of ryozaki uh l the main villain of this story you know he is the the ultimate kind of Sherlock Holmes kind of really weird eating everything all the time kind of character who is discovering everything about Kira our killer who's the one behind all the killings because of the death note yeah you know they really tried to go with him being very much like the anime and I just think there's a certain thing that just doesn't work sometimes when you're translating something to live action and you have an actual live person trying to perform these moments that maybe are a little quirky or funny or silly or kind of strange a little odd that really work in anime and in this movie I feel like they really go overboard with the fact that he's eating all the time and it kind of takes away from the charmful kind of gimmick of that character eating a lot in the anime in anime that's such a common trope to have characters that eat a lot you know one of my favorite anime or my favorite anime it is one piece and the main character luffy is constantly gorging himself to the point that he you know kind of expands and blows up because he is a rubber man and i think that if they were to make a live action version of that which apparently they are and i'm very worried about if he was just constantly eating the whole time and you had just have this real live action actor just consistently eating the entire time just really leaning into that gimmick about the character sometimes it could just become kind of cheesy i don't mind that he's eating throughout the course of the film but literally every single scene that he's in it just feels like they're going for the over-the-top cartoony vibe the way he sits on chairs the way he like just moves the way he moves his body the way he stands like everything about him and constantly having a you know food item in his hand him holding things in his hand like a cell phone they just went so over the top with his character and the performance and, and the hairstyle and, and the body language compared to everybody else he just seems like a big cartoon character and there's just that inconsistency for me so he's a little bit cringe for me the character of l in this film i just struggled with him in the first death note and in this one the last name overall not my favorite movie of the death note live action movies and it's just okay in the overall like this isn't a movie that i'm ever really clamoring to see ever again but i appreciate mike for having me check out something i've never seen before even though i am familiar with the source material so a big thanks to you my friend for having me here in another video i look forward to hearing the rest of your thoughts on this video but yeah, big thanks to you, my friend. I really do appreciate it, and I'll go ahead and pass it off to you now. Thank you. My man, Anthony, thank you so much, man, for collaborating once again with me and joining me onto the channel. Honestly, it's such a pleasure to have you. Until he's next back on the channel, his link is down below to his channel.
Go give him some love. Go subscribe to him. Tell him that the Z review sent here. And go check out his latest videos because there's a couple that I'm on. But he also has some great collaborations like myself on a channel like Rashad, Fantastic Media, Jacob, Dear from Interpret Stars, all those awesome guys. So let's get into a bit of Anthony's thoughts. So I will say that some of the things Anthony mentioned in this, I do kind of agree with. So nice the performances can seem very anime-esque. Which I guess if you're wanting a, an interpretation of all these characters of their own kind of design and their own initiatives, you might not get that with these two parts of the films. However, if you are wanting a very animatronic anime style performance, especially with Elle's character, because I know that is kind of the biggest gripe that Anthony has, which again, I can completely see why and I don't. 100% disagree with it. However, there is a slight bit that I do disagree because in the anime, Elle is always eating sweets, chocolate, ice cream, you know, whatever it is. And in this film, they actually make them do the same thing. Again, if you want that truly fearful anime performance, the guy who plays Elle succeeds in that. And when it comes to the scenes where people are having the heart attacks or getting killed by this notebook, there is times where it can be a little bit over-exaggerated or a bit over the top. But at the same time, they've got to sell those heart attacks or at least make it look fatal to what this Death Note power is actually doing. Now, what I will say with Andy that I do agree with is the CG in this was definitely better. I felt like the CG with Rem was actually pretty good. I didn't think it was off-putting, but saying that he isn't in this a lot compared to how much we maybe got of Ryuk in the first part, which is understandable. But for the most part, I actually liked Rem's style and Rem's kind of involvement in this part because I felt like it added to the depth of the story which of course it should do with him being Mises got a death and I also like Ryuk although he does get relegated in this movie which again I agree with Anthony we don't see a lot of him and I think one of the biggest things that these two parts don't get right is the involvement with Light and Ryuk because in the anime we get so many moments where they're together and they always say cracking jokes or Ryuk's cracking a joke always teasing light about something saying oh you know Elle got the better and upper hand of you or you know wow you've outsmarted Elle kind of thing he's always on the fence he's never defending light he's never defending Elle especially the second part he doesn't get a lot of time to shine which was a bit disappointing but at the same time if you don't like the cg of him in the first one then yeah i guess it's an improvement <laughs> into the second part because you don't see him that much what i will say about this and this is kind of where i'm torn a little bit on the movie personally is where they change the ending so this is a spoiler for anyone who hasn't seen the anime or anything like that or the first part so in this we know obviously after episode 27 28 in the original anime l dies so does Watari. so this leads into nia for example, who then is the L predecessor to take out light. However, in this movie, they don't go that route. And by all means, great. I'm all for that because he sucks in my personal opinion. That I appreciate that they try to change the ending for this. So, for example, it's either going to be right, L wins or light wins. How the anime should have ended Back in 2006 when they showed this, it should have been either Light takes over and needs to go to the new world or L wins and Light's killed. I like that in this movie, we get that. So for example, in the end of this, L does win and it ends by Ryuk foreshadowed by L and the rest of the police actually writes Light's name in the notebook and kills him off. Which a lot of theories have gone round of that's how Light died in the anime. But I also like the fact that they changed the part of the after effect of this. And we see a bit of like how Light's family copes with the loss of Light himself. Because we don't get that in the anime. We just see him bleeding out on the stairs. And that's kind of it. Whereas we actually get a little bit of a backstory. And a bit of a burner of how these characters feel going forward of Light's death. And at least the family get a bit closure saying that Kira killed Light. However, I will agree with Anthony in one part he did say that some characters were thrown in this. Especially Kiyomi Takeda. I felt like she was thrown in this quite a lot especially how when she's first on this they don't even introduce her name and for a little bit i was like well actually who who's that character is it who i think it is and they do do some decisions where they expose her to the notebook or expose her killings of the notebook and this is how l finds out which was a little bit lazy compared to how they find out in the anime but what i will say in kind of closing thoughts i appreciate the changes i appreciate that it did try to go a different narrative especially when they're not including like the last 11 12 episodes of the original anime overall my score for this review is 
So yeah, firstly, big thanks to Anthony once again for joining me on the club. Again, you can find his link down below. Go give him some love. Tell him that the Z review sent you. I'd really appreciate it. And please give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel because I've got a lot more Death Note content coming up. Again, I'm going to review every entry in a Death Note, every TV series, or at least different entries or series that we got off Death Note. I'm also going to review the manga anime book itself. And I'm also going to try view the Death Note musical if I can and give you my thoughts on that. But until next time, guys, this has been the Z review and I'll be seeing you later.